So the story of how we started our fueling company that went from zero dollars to run rate of over a hundred million dollars a year in four years and you know exiting that company in four years. So it all started on 4th of July. Uh, me and my roommate at the time, Bailey, you know, we were on the rowing team together, you know, good friends. We were just, you know, drinking before we were going out. I was drinking classy steel reserve and I think he had a sour apple for loco. We were living the high life and I think from doing our, you know, civil engineering internships, you know, watching Shark Tank for about a month straight every single night, we kind of had the itch and wanted to, you know, try something different. So when we were actually watching uh, Impractical Jokers, which, you know, a couple articles had been made, you know, about us basically being inspired by the Impractical Jokers to do it, which is true. They basically had mentioned a mobile gasoline delivery company in a, in a skit they did where they basically took prospective entrepreneurs and asked them to give their business ideas of what they thought would be you know a good idea for something to start and one of the ideas they gave was mobile gasoline so we basically decided that we should do this and basically working at it for you know with the jobs about probably like four to five hours a day after work um, we figured out that uh, mobile gasoline was not good. It's too little gallons, too little margin. Gas stations really want to just make their margin off of, you know, crimpets and hoagies and, you know, other treats that they sell inside. Diesel fuel was where the margin was at. So, and the tanks were much larger. We thought, why not go to a place where, you know, we can go fill up 20 trucks that each have 150 gallons versus going to fill up one Nissan Altima in somebody's driveway. Yeah, so from there we really just ran with that idea of mobile fueling of, you know, diesel truck. At the time we thought there was no competition. We kind of ran with that thought for quite some time, but there was, you know, plenty of competition. Let's go back to, you know, it was like September, our senior year. We've done a bunch of startup competitions. Um, we're in a couple startup programs with, you know, University of Delaware and Ballard Spar, and they were super helpful in, you know, getting our idea off the ground. Uh, basically building the model, building the model. Flew out to Oregon. We basically reached out to a bunch of mobile diesel fueling companies on the West Coast and just asked them if they would talk to us. We said we had a project for school and then we were looking to do some research. Talked to this one company, Brett Hauer Oil, and you know their vice president, Kevin, was super cool with us. You know He helped us. He let us come out there, let us ride in the trucks. You know, we ended up telling him, you know, we were looking to start a company on the East Coast, but uh, he, you know, he's not too concerned about that competition being, you know, 3,000 miles away, basically. In Oregon, we learned how to drive the trucks. We got, you know, he sent us some sample contracts and everything. So, you know, we were kind of going off the ground. We then tried to get our first couple of customers, you know, before we had any money. Now, this means we had no money and we were just telling people that we had trucks and we were ready to go. Uh, we got four companies to sign contracts to work with us. And then we got our investment based upon that. So the rowing coaches ended up in, you know, committing to invest into the company. And with that seed money, we were able to get a couple trucks and get off the ground. By July of 2018, we were running the trucks. About a month before that, we had got our commercial driver's license. And the business was a lot more fun before that. It was kind of like, you know, basically the next year and a half, two years was just doing you know, physical labor, fuel and trucks, trying to get customers, uh, you know, just seven days a week because you got to just go. We didn't have money for employees, so we were the drivers. That was just super valuable because, you know, we were able to learn sort of every aspect of how the business works, which I think if you're starting something that is super, super valuable and definitely needed to have that extra knowledge. It doesn't seem like you would need to, but the nuances of, you know, filling up different reefer trailers and the angles you should go and filling up a school bus slower than you fill up, you know, semi truck and the different, you know, anti siphons for preventing fuel getting sucked out of the tanks and how that impacts filling up the tank all the way and making sure you fill it up more slowly as the bubbles get up in the tank so that the automatic shutoff doesn't go off right away and the guy wakes up the next day with 80% full of a tank. It's just little quality things that matter extremely, you know, a lot. And when you're, you know, me and my two other co-founders, Sam and Bailey, you know, we were the drivers, so we kind of didn't really make mistakes either. It wasn't like we were calling out or, you know, not wanting to fill up trucks all the way or not hitting all the stops. So the service was, you know, perfect. So we got a really good name for ourselves and, you know, hired a couple other guys that we knew. And, you know, our team in the beginning was just, you know, super, super dedicated guys who were just going to, you know, go perfectly. And, the thing was like when we had five trucks, six trucks, seven trucks, 
we were a better service than we were when we had, you know, we got up to 18 trucks, 19 trucks. That's just one of those things also, we were really able to control the quality in the beginning. By that point, when we had all the trucks, we'd already built up a really good, you know, reputation for ourselves. So over basically a year and a half, you know, we kind of grew the business slowly to doing about, you know, 300,000, 350,000 gallons a month. Uh, we kind of plateaued there until COVID hit. And um, I'm sure you guys remember when COVID hit, the price of fuel went negative. So this really, really helped us because basically at that point, everyone was making a fortune off of selling fuel. The gas station prices stayed decently high, but the people who were buying at the refineries were getting it for significantly less. So there was a point where we were buying fuel for like 59 cents a gallon. All of a sudden we were able to use that cash flow to hire one of the co-founders mothers to be the salesperson, which turned out to be uh, very, very good. She really blew up the business and we went from doing, you know, 350,000 gallons a month. And then in a year we were doing you know, one and a half million gallons a month, and then finally finished out uh, before we exited at, you know, about a little over two million gallons a month. So having someone totally focused on the sales really, you know, totally changed the business. And the way we did sales was just a search and destroy method. So basically physically going to all the places and asking them to buy fuel from us, telling them we'll do a better job because we're the people doing the work. Our competitors were much larger than us, a thousand trucks essentially. So a lot of these people were very willing to switch to get better service and having, you know, that was our advantage. So we took advantage of it. Using the search and destroy method really, really helped. When we, you know, ended up having to sell the company, I think we would have kept going given that the price of fuel, you know, we were buying it for 60 cents for a while. You know, the price of fuel went to in May of 2022, it got as high as, you know, $5 and 50 cents a gallon. So that is 11 times higher than it was. So basically we had to front so much more money on the, the accounts receivable that from a cash flow standpoint, the business we needed to exit or probably do something with private equity. We decided to sell the company as an asset purchase. In the asset purchase agreement, we basically sold the trucks and the customers and you know we all have not competes to from selling fuel. So all in all, we started the company with, you know, we raised about three hundred thousand dollars to start in the beginning. Uh, we raised it through getting customers before we raised any money to increase the valuation. We ended up selling it for over an eight figure exit and we didn't have any technological backgrounds. Uh, we were engineers, but we know nothing in technology. So I just want this to be, you know, something where uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, like when they start off, they very much told to you know get into the technology space, but a lot of people are not skilled enough to do that. So there are businesses out there, plenty of them, where you know if you work really hard and you know do a lot of the labor in the beginning and become an expert at what you're doing, uh, there could be you know tons of fruit at the end of your journey, and you'll learn a ton you know along the way. Uh, well, I appreciate you guys listening. It's getting pretty late. Uh, I was a little brief on the story, but uh, it's almost two in the morning here, so uh, I'm getting a little tired, but. You know, thanks so much for listening, and uh, if you have any questions or suggestions, just let me know. Have a good night.